Now, the reason I'm shooting this video is because over the past 12 years, I've worked with men. First as a sales trainer and mentor for mainly male college students, then over the past six years as an addiction recovery coach for men struggling with sexually compulsive disorders. Now, the hashtag MeToo is a viral hashtag, in case you didn't know, that spread last month on social media to denounce sexual assault and sexual harassment due to the allegations made against Harvey Weinstein. The hashtag and events surrounding them have caused many people to come forward with their experiences of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Since Harvey Weinstein, many other celebrities have been accused of sexual harassment. Uh, Louis C.K., uh, Roy Moore, who is he's more of a politician, George Takei, uh, Kevin Spacey, more and more each week. As for the accusations and their connection to sex addiction, I'll say this. There is a clear difference between a man who has a sex addiction and one who struggles with the behavior exhibited by Harvey Weinstein. First of all, there are certain criteria that describe addiction. Now, preoccupation to the point of obsession with a behavior or a substance of choice um, is one of the characteristics. Loss of control over that behavior, and you usually find evidence when there are multiple failed attempts to quit that behavior or that substance, if you're talking about substance uh, addiction. Usually there are also many other related consequences which are negative. Um, they have problems in their, they have problems in your relationship. You're gonna have issues at school or in your career. Your health is going to be affected. Your mental health is affected with anxiety, low self-esteem, um, financial issues, financial problems, loss of interest in many other things in your life, legal issues, and much more. So with sex addiction, your sexual fantasies and your sexual behavior is ongoing. It's ongoing and it's, it's out of control. It involves fantasies and behaviors which are actually causing serious destructive consequences in your life or in a person's life. Now, Harvey Weinstein's behavior has a lot more to do with power and opportunity than it does with sex addiction. Sex addiction has become an escape. You know, it's become like this get out of jail free card for many men who take advantage of their position of power and opportunity to sexually harass others, which is unwanted, non-consensual sexual behavior towards another person. Now, there are those who, as always, ask the question, well, all these women coming out years later, why didn't they say anything when this was happening to them? Well, let me tell you the reason why. In many of these cases, the person exhibiting this non-consensual behavior, um, non-consensual sexual behavior, is really not a bad person. And hear me out. In many cases, they're actually charming, they're professional, they might even be good parents, good employers, good friends, productive members of society. They might be generous, they might have kind personalities, uh, and many other positive traits. But it's more of a case of you hate the behavior of the person, but you don't really hate the person. You know, it's, it's just a negative aspect of their life, and most times people just kind of brush it away. You know, like, ah, oh, that's just how he is. You know, kind of like that creepy uncle at Thanksgiving or the holidays. He's still family, but he's creepy. Uh, so as a result, men who exhibit this behavior rarely experience any consequences. Nobody checks them on this. So the more power that they have, the fewer people that there are to call them out. And so they just carry on with the behavior. And one of the ways to be sure that this is not a sexual addiction is actually the, if you look at the Harvey Weinstein case, is the grooming behavior um, in that case. So you hear that he called the next day to make sure that you know, these people were cool with him. And usually people who perpetrate behavior like this, they are very invested in being accepted by other people. And they also really don't get what they're doing. This means that they have no idea what the impact of their behavior is like on another person. I will say a lot of times when I refer some clients out, it's usually because they tell me about their um, some of the behaviors that they have. And if they have no awareness of the fact that something they're doing is illegal, that it's non-consensual, that it's hurting, hurting people and that it can constitute harassment, a lot of times it doesn't fall into the spectrum of, of sex addiction. Sometimes they're reaching out to someone like me 
because they feel, again, they've watched celebrities like Tiger Woods and other people do it, and so they feel like, oh my God, this is a, this is a get out of jail free card. Let me reach out to this guy. But it doesn't change the fact, but it doesn't change the things that they've done in the past. It doesn't change the fact that they are perpetrating and this is not sex addiction. It's also interesting because in cases like this, it's so easy for regular guys, regular men to point fingers at celebrities and demonize them for their behavior. You know, like, you know, that guy's so messed up, all these Hollywood people. But the truth is that there are thousands, maybe even millions of men who exhibit, exhibit the same behavior. And this is a fact. This happens all over the world. I travel internationally a lot. I see it and I also see it in this country. Here in the United States, when I ran a door-to-door -door sales organization, this was so common, um, sexual assault and sexual harassment for female sales reps that we had guidelines on their behavior around male prospects and customers in or around their homes. And this was because it was normal in our line of work to have men, married men, Christian men, pastors, deacons, whatever you want to call them, uh, proposition female direct sales reps uh, for sex. They'll masturbate in front of them, they'll whip out their penises and exhibit other similar behavior. Again, it's a power issue. Uh, the, the female salesperson is in their domain. They have the ability to say yes or no to a sale, which is power. Now, outside of that, these sales reps are only in their home because they came highly recommended. These men who are exhibiting this behavior came highly recommended by members of their community. So there were referrals, their church, their civic organizations that they belong to. And like I said, many times they are high ranking in, uh, and looked up to in their communities. They're councilmen, they're individuals who are um, respected. In my practice, in my recovery coaching practice, I have clients who were victimized by people with this behavior while they were growing up. And I have clients who actively engage in this behavior themselves. The tough question, the difficult question is, what part of you is like Harvey Weinstein? You know, it's so easy for men to point fingers at someone else and, like I said, demonize them when the truth is that many of us are not looking in the mirror and saying, like, how could I be like that? Just because you don't talk to women, uh, just because you don't have an active sexual life does not mean you don't have the potential for that. Now, I personally think that this is a great moment to raise awareness, especially among men, about male sexual entitlement. I've seen firsthand the attitude that men have towards women's bodies and towards sex based on my work with porn addicts. I myself, having recovered from years of porn addiction, as a society, we are definitely going through uh, some sort of revolution. But the main purpose of this video is to raise awareness of another issue, and that is the impact, the collateral damage that this may have on men. When it comes to sex in our society, when we put idealistic concepts aside, men are required to initiate sexual interest towards women. This is a biological and a sociological construct. A man who cannot express his sexual interest in a woman will find it very challenging to have sex or to have sexual companionship in his life. These are facts. Men are the ones who bear the risk of rejection and the emotional pain that comes with it. Most of the time, when a man expresses sexual interest, he will be rejected, statistically speaking. Um, it's not a woman's responsibility to initiate sex with a man. It does happen, of course, but for the most part, the bulk of the responsibility falls on men. Men have also been conditioned to take on the responsibility of making sure a woman is sexually and emotionally satisfied during and after sex. I often tell my clients, especially those who are recovering from porn-induced erectile dysfunction, that one of the ways to overcome their anxiety surrounding sex, if they have that, is to realize that a woman's orgasm is not their responsibility. Again, her orgasm is not your responsibility. Women's arousal template and their orgasms are more complex than men's, and there are many reasons why a woman will not orgasm, so most of the time it's going to be her issue, not yours. So for those struggling with erectile dysfunction, let go of this responsibility. The collateral damage that I speak of is the risk of women throwing in you know, weird and awkward approaches by men into this, this um, sexual harassment bucket. So there's no specific formula for approaching a woman whom you're interested in. Even the smoothest, best looking, most socially adept man 
will have moments when he interacts with a woman in an absolutely awkward way that could be misconstrued as creepy. So th there's no training um, for men to initiate sex in a way that will get a specific response. It's an organic process which kind of involves tension on both ends. Um, men find it hard enough to initiate due to the risks involved. You know, they could be judged for their looks. You could approach a woman at the wrong time. Um, so many things are out of a man's control. And when you add in the risk of sexual, hara uh, sexual harassment accusation, most men are liable to opt out of dating <laughs> and sex um, in traditional ways entirely. Many men with good intentions are experiencing an incredible amount of fear and guilt at the prospect of this. I know because I receive the emails every day. Uh, this increases the influence of pornography, prostitution, and the sex trafficking industry. Um, but, but what of women, okay? Yes, some men are opportunistic and sexually harass and assault women, but what is the female equivalent of that? Is it that women are incapable of inflicting trauma on men? No. In fact, sexual abuse exists with women as the perpetrators, but it's more emotional. A man who is falsely accused of sexual assault has to go through his own um, um, uh, suffering or his own form of trauma. So I've count and what I mean by this is that I've counseled men who are in jail and prison who are there because of a false allegation of sexual assault. You hear it in the news. It's common. It's a it's a common situation in the divorce process. Um, even most of the high-profile Uber cases involving drunk women have an aspect of um, these threats of false sexual assaults. So as wonderful as the Me Too awareness movement is, there's still plenty of room for abuse and manipulation. And this, this is something I want to bring into awareness. We all know that sex happens, sex occurs due to signals, you know, uh, flirting, subtle cues. It's a seductive process. Um, people, people having sex is not a straightforward thing, the process of getting there. We hear women uh, talking to their friends about how they can't believe that a man they're interested in is not picking up on their signals. And we hear men telling their friends that they don't know if a woman is getting their signals or they're worried about the dreaded friend zone. Um, it, this, this sort of thing makes up a significant part of our pop culture and our romantic comedies, our movies. But many young men today are unfortunately raised on a steady diet of porn. Me Too as a form of awareness is a great way to penetrate that reality and let men know that what they masturbate to is not how things work in the real world. I think that's great. Um, however, Me Too only shows men what not to do. It doesn't educate them on what they should do. Rather, it assumes that because you know what not to do, then automatically you should of course know what you should do. So it's easy to say, well, you know what, men shouldn't rape women or men shouldn't try any non-consensual sexual behavior. This is so obvious. But for many men, seduction is not a formula. Many women watching this, many women watching this may say, listen, there's a clear difference between respectfully asking a woman out for coffee and masturbating in front of her. <laughs> or, you know, a woman saying yes to coffee doesn't mean that you get to masturbate in front of her later. And that's a justified response from a woman's point of view in this sort of climate. There is a risk that male sexuality as a whole will be vilified and judged as something negative. Only time will tell. I want all the men watching this to do three things. Number one, understand what consent really means. This is essential in today's society. Understand what it means when initiating sexual interest with the woman and understand what it means when a woman is expressing interest in you. There are also places where there's very little room for expressing your sexuality these days. Um, at these places, you are at a higher risk of a sexual assault or harassment accusation at work or at school, for example. You know, if the recent high, high profile cases are any indication, sexual advances at work may not turn out well for you. Now, we all know that people meet and get sexually involved with coworkers, but understand that the climate is changing and stay aware. Um, at a bar or nightclub, the atmosphere is absolutely different. That doesn't mean that anything goes, but it does mean that you can express yourself in ways which you, you, you can't at work. And no, that doesn't include whipping your penis out and masturbating. So set boundaries for yourself. You know, situations where you will not engage with a woman sexually. You know, I had a rule for years. Don't dip your pen in company ink. And it worked out well for me. 
don't have sex with your co-workers. Set your own rules. Two, don't live in fear. Do not retreat to pornography. Don't give up on your natural sexuality. If you are not in a relationship and you're still single and sexually active, accept the fact that you will get rejected. In fact, you may even be regarded as a creep sometimes, and that's fine. There are men I work with who are on the autism spectrum who, or who have Asperger's syndrome who are automatically classified as creepy when they express their interest in women. Society doesn't care about these men's sexuality. Just because they were born with this issue doesn't mean that they do not have sexual needs or romantic inclinations. Even if these men approach women in a polite and respectful way, they still run a huge risk of a woman taking it the wrong way. And the same goes for men who, are, who have extreme social anxiety or who are from a different culture. So the point is, never let anyone shame you for your desires as a man. When a client calls me or a man struggling with a sexually compulsive disorder finds me online, he only calls me, he only reaches out to me when he knows and when he trusts me enough to know that he will not be judged or shamed for his sexual behavior, for revealing it. This is why the first point is important. Understanding what consent is and then setting up boundaries in your own life. If you're ever accused, you can then stand strong and defend yourself with confidence. Three, if you know men who, are engaged, who, who engage in behavior which constitutes sexual assault or sexual harassment, Man, educate them. Call them out in a respectful way. Don't be like these other male actors in Hollywood who come out and make statements about Harvey Weinstein when shit hits the fan. And you know, if you have a friend who comes back from a date and tells you, yeah, you, you know what, she didn't want to have sex, so you know, I masturbated in front of her and I left. You know, uh, you know, if you know it's a situation that probably wasn't consensual, let him know, educate him. That's my message on this issue. I would like to know your thoughts on what I've shared today. So please leave them in the comment section below.